everybody and welcome to another Verl Recommends. My name is Kendra and I'm a librarian at the Cowichan Branch and I'm going to talk to you today about one of my favorite Canadian authors, Helen Humphreys. I love Helen Humphreys because her writing doesn't fit into any of the typical categories. Instead it's sort of a mixture of a lot of different genres. So whether we have labeled her as fiction or non-fiction in the library, uh, her books, most of them, have a bit of biography, uh, a good amount of history, and when they have mis history in them, a uh, lot of meticulous research. So many of them take place in England, and many of them take place during the years of World War II. Interestingly enough, Helen Humphreys was born in Kingston on Thames in England, and now lives in Kingston, Ontario. So she is a Canadian author, but definitely still has a love of Britain, which comes through in her books. And if you read uh, some interviews of Humphreys, you will find that she states over and over that her main goal in her books is to really fully capture as much as she can what it was like to be a certain person at a certain time in a certain place. And she says that she feels that the only way to do this is to use a variety of genres in one book. Uh, she also uses a lot of images. Most of her books have beautiful, um, period-specific uh, watercolors, photographs, whatever, to help her tell the story better. So one of my favorite books, probably my favorite book, which I couldn't put down, most of her books are unusually small and 200 pages or less, so they're a quick read, and I think you'll read this probably all in one night. The story is so gripping. Um, again, this is considered fiction, but it is based on eyewitness accounts and personal documents of people who lived through one of the worst nights of bombing in Coventry, England during World War II, and that was November 14th, 1940. So her three fictional characters um, go through the night, wandering the streets, describing the sights and sounds, and believe me, you feel like you are there. Here are some of my favorite parts of the story. Harriet and Jeremy see the horses on the high street. Three horses running down the road, their manes lifting through the smoke, their hooves knocking on the cobblestones. Three night horses. The horses run right past them, close enough to touch. They are running away from the fire and the bombing, running toward the open fan of countryside outside of the city. So you can just imagine that. And this one. They pass a row of houses, burned to nothing but their frames, and yet on the windowsill of each house is a cat, curled up, nose to tail. Cats stay with the building, Harriet thinks. Dogs go with the people. Wonderful writing, beautiful, amazing story, just gripping. Uh, probably tied for first place uh, in, my, in Helen Humphrey's books is The Frozen Thames. So The Frozen Thames, published in 2008 and yet still so popular that there were enough holds on it that I couldn't get the actual book. So here's a picture of the cover. The, the Thames in England froze a total, froze solid a total of 40 times only, over seven centuries. And then with the building of London Bridge, because of the way they built it, the, the way the water flowed after that, it, it wouldn't freeze again. Anyway, because it froze 40 times, she has written 40 short, short little vignettes, two to three pages each. Uh, and again, considered fiction because some of the stories she uses fictional characters, some are real characters, uh, but based on, again, eyewitness accounts, personal documents, meticulous research of what went on during those 40 times that the river froze solid. So here's an example of one of the images in the book, a beautiful uh, period painting of one of the frost fairs, they were called, that were held on the ice when the river froze. She described such things as uh, farmers driving their animals over the ice, um, royalty uh, driving their horses and carriages across the ice to and fro from Buckingham Palace. Um, she describes uh, a couple during the plague years who would sneak out of their houses onto the safety of the wide open expanse of the frozen river. Uh, wonderful, wonderful short stories. And those two considered fiction, but again, based on history, true events, meticulous research. This one, definitely nonfiction. 
Helen Humphreys was inspired to write this book, she says, when she discovered a heritage apple tree on her uh, Kingston, Ontario property. Um, the heritage apple was called a white winter pear mane and considered the best tasting apple in the world because of its flavors of pear mixed with apple, apparently. So I can't wait to taste one now. I don't know about you. Anyway, she describes at the beginning of this book that when researching the history of the apple, it really was a was a story of white settlement in North America. She describes such interesting events as uh, the late 1700s when white settlers and their armies would kill orchards that were cultivated by indigenous communities. Uh, it would decimate entire orchards to starve the indigenous community and drive them out of the area. Uh, terrible things like that and as well as more positive ones like white settlers coming to North America from Europe in the 1800s were required to plant at least 50 apple trees, probably to um, ensure that they wouldn't die of starvation in their first few years over here. Um, the book it has beautiful color plates, um, again, to tell the story more thoroughly. Uh, these are early 1900 um, watercolor drawings commissioned by the United States Department of Agriculture in the late 1800s and early 1900s. Um, so here's a few experts. So when the Division of Palmology in the United States Department of Agriculture began in 1866, it was overwhelmed with requests from farmers to identify the apple trees on their property. And so it was decided that an illustrative library would help with this task. So over 50 watercolor artists were commissioned to produ produce accurate paintings of all American fruit, including 3,807 paintings of apples. And interestingly enough, at one point, there were over 17,000 different varieties of apples in North America. And today, believe it or not, there are only about 100 commercially grown varieties. So it feels like there are a lot of varieties today, but there were a lot more hundreds of years ago. Um, there's a whole entire chapter about the poet Robert Frost and his love of cultivating apple orchards. So again, a wonderful book, 200 pages or less like her other books, short book, uh, just a gripping story. Um, real people, white settlement, it just goes off on so many tangents. So I hope you are inspired to try Helen Humphreys as your next author. Uh, she's wonderful. We carry all of her books. Check out our catalog and see you again at our next Rural Recommends on the third Wednesday of November, November 17th. Bye for now.